Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. I trust you had a great weekend. We chased the moon in the early hours, but did not have a blood moon, but it was pretty grand early in the morning. Political reflections, there's been an enormous uh, uh, toing and froing over this gentleman, Nathan Phillips, Omaha elder, Vietnam veteran, former director of the Native Youth Alliance, keeper of a sacred pipe, water protector at Standing Rock. Know him. Um, honoring Native American veterans at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, and quite a story, and it's just appalling how he was treated and left me thinking that folks having a go at him don't realize he's, they're all immigrants, he isn't. The US Navy could still send an aircraft carrier through the Taiwan Strait, the independence reporting, in spite of Chinese military technology advances which pose a greater threat to American warships than ever before the U.S. Chief of Naval Operations has said. Washington sent ships through the strategic waterway which separates Taiwan from the Chinese mainland three times last year, but has not dispatched a carrier in more than 10 years. We don't really see any kind of limitation on whatever type of ship could pass through those waters, Admiral John Richardson told reporters in Tokyo. When asked if more advanced Chinese weapons pose too large a risk, we see the Taiwan Strait as another stretch of international waters, so that's why we do the transits. 15th of October last year, I was writing about the incident with the USS Decatur where a Chinese warship came within 45 yards of that ship in, in the South China Sea, and I said it's surely a precursor. Saudi Crown Prince shows a chilling instability. Lindsey Graham was quite outspoken. Uh, a level of instability that is chilling. Sanctions are forthcoming, likely in the next few days or weeks, the Republican senators said in an interview on Saturday in Ankara. Congress will send a very clear signal to the world and Saudi Arabia that we would not be doing business as usual. The heir to Saudi Arabia's monarchy, widely known as MBS, has so far largely dodged any reprisals against himself. Trump opting in November to impose sanctions against 17 lower-level Saudis implicated in the murder following global outrage. There's strong bipartisan support not only to condemn the actions of Saudi MBS, but actually to do something about it. Previously, it called him a wrecking ball and a toxic figure. This is what we expect of rogues, barbarians, Graham said in the interview Saturday, to give him a pass would be to open up a Pandora's box in a region already in turmoil. The box has already been opened, in my view. Um, I wrote about MBS in November. He's the alleged owner of Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, which is a painting of Christ, Salvatore Mundi, savior of the world, dated to 1500, of course. Uh, there was a fantastic article which says that uh, this bidding war between MBS and MBZ was a money laundering exercise conducted in plain sight. He will be the custodian of the holy mosques after all. Um, Khashoggi was murdered in cold blood in an obviously Quentin Tarantino style operation. The facts that have been presented are stranger than fiction. My question is, if this is how they conduct themselves on foreign soil, just imagine what must be going on at home. The image of Khashoggi's son being compelled to shake MBS's hand is surely the most apposite metaphor for the House of Saud. I came across this, centers should break their lineage, break their roots, break their connections and break their origins completely shovel up the roots of two-faced people, dig them out and vow to fight these two-faced people until the end. 
course, that's referencing Xinjiang, about which I wrote in March last year when I said China has unveiled a digital panopticon in Xinjiang. Dissent is measured and snuffed out very quickly in China. China has unveiled a digital panopticon in Xinjiang where a combination of data from video surveillance, face and license plate recognition, mobile device locations and official records to identify targets for detention. Xinjiang is surely a precursor to how the CCCP will manage dissent. The actions in Xinjiang are part of the regional authorities' ongoing strike hard campaign and of President Xi's stability, maintenance and enduring peace drive in the region. And then I came across this in the Telegraph, we owe China, what can we do? Why Muslim countries stay silent over China's mass detention of Uyghurs. Few ideas, the article concludes, have been so successfully marketed in the last couple of decades as the Chinese government's notion that you can't criticize it publicly without it making the universe collapse around you. Fantastic article in the Financial Times about George Orwell and Aldous Huxley. For Orwell, humanity was facing a permanent state of war and totalitarian mind control, summed up by the image of a boot stamping on a human face forever. Both men imagined future societies completely obsessed with sex, though in diametrically opposite ways. State-enforced repression and celibacy in the case of Orwell, deliberate narcotizing promiscuity in the case of Huxley. In Brave New World, promiscuity is not just normal, it is actively encouraged. Total frankness in all aspects of sexuality, ditto. Sex is a distraction and a source of entertainment, almost a drug. Huxley would have looked at our world of dating apps and sexualized mass entertainment and perhaps especially shows such as Love Island and Naked Attraction and awarded his predictions a solid A+. I'd never heard of this program. Naked Attraction is a Channel 4 dating show on which people choose a partner based on whether or not they like the look of their genitals. The audience sees the genitals too. When you describe this show to people, they often think they've misunderstood, that you can't mean that people stand with their faces concealed and their genitals exposed and are chosen by a prospective partner on that basis. But that's exactly what happens. I recommend this program to anyone who doesn't agree that norms around sexuality have changed. Orwell saw a future in which the state discouraged sex. In this respect, he was completely wrong and Huxley was completely right. Huxley looked ahead and saw a future in which life was very pleasant, lullingly, deadeningly, numbingly pleasant. Undemanding pleasures and unchallenging entertainments are central to the functioning of society. Sources of distraction play a vital role. The feelies, the main source of mass entertainment, are all about escape from the self. When the individual feels, society reels is the motto, and every effort is made to stop people from feeling strong emotion. The preferred method for this is SOMA, a side effect free drug which guarantees disassociated happiness. Here again Huxley could look at the modern use of antidepressants, anti-anxiety and sedative medications and conclude that he had nailed it. Facebook in particular are anticipated by Brave New World, Facebook's mission statement to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together sounds a lot like the New World's motto, community, identity and stability. It's an extraordinarily good article, you must read it. Um, and uh, talking then a globally dominant society ruled by a party and a strong leader, a society which uses every possible method of surveillance and data collection to monitor and control its citizens. 
a society which is also enjoying a record rise in prosperity and abundance and using unprecedented new techniques in science and genetics, that society would look a lot like a blend of Orwell's and Huxley's visions. It will also look a lot like modern day China. The developing Chinese citizen score a blend of reputational and financial and socio-political metrics used to determine access to everything from travel and education and health care is such a perfect blend of dystopias that we can only credit to a new writer, Huxwell. 26th of March, I touched on this in an article, Self Facebook. It is one of the central demands of the party in Orwell's book that you reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. Trump put that maxim into effect on his very first day in office. And then finally, the meeting room, named only good news. Can you guess whether that belongs to Huxley's world controller or Sheryl Sandberg? <laughs>